Chris simply vanished. And when I say vanish, I need y'all to listen to me. Chris simply vanished. Chris simply vanished. The morning of the 25th of January, 2002, started like any other for 20-year-old surveyor, Christopher Tompkins. Saying goodbye to his mother, he left home for work at ten past eight, just like he would on every other day. He met his three colleagues and together, the four-man surveyor team began what was a typical day surveying through a lightly wooded area near County Line Road, close to Highway 85 in Ellerslie, Georgia, USA. The team moved in a fixed line formation, with each man distanced roughly 50 feet apart, with one in front of the other. They were aligned in this way as they walked in the same direction through the area. Christopher was at the back, but was easily within eyesight of the man in front of him and was even in regular communication with his colleagues. And here is where the normal day turned into a mystery. One moment, the surveyor in front of him was talking to Christopher, and just a few seconds later, he looked back to find that he was no longer there. Confused and probably slightly shocked, the surveyor alerted the others and explained what had just happened, and together they searched the area. It didn't make any sense to them. There was nowhere he could have gone to without being seen. Just a short distance away, they soon found one of Christopher's work boots. Strangely, just hanging from a barbed wire fence, with no other sign of his other boot. In very close proximity to the boot, they also found some of his work tools, blue fabric from his work clothes, and 12 cents which is believed to belong to him, since it looked clean and freshly fallen. And it seems that was all that was left of him. The other surveyors kept up the search, but stopped at around 1pm, roughly four hours after Christopher disappeared. This is when they decided to call their boss to let him know that Christopher was missing, but his mother was not told until 4.15pm. After 24 hours, a missing persons report was filed and the authorities began their search, but no further clues were uncovered. Shortly after the initial search, a more intense investigation of the area involving dogs was launched, but still, nothing was found. Weirdly, months later, Christopher's other boot was found on a private property, 900 yards from where Christopher had originally gone missing. If the events took place exactly as the other surveyors say, it's as if Christopher practically went missing in the blink of an eye, leaving behind only a boot, some loose change, and a few tools. But how on earth is that even possible? Where could he have gone? Why were there no other signs of him anywhere? The dogs didn't even pick up his scent. The disappearance is as much of a mystery today as it was in 2002. Naturally, foul play was one of the first theories. Why had his colleagues not reported the disappearance sooner? Especially since the circumstances were so strange. The hours in between his disappearance and them reporting it were more than enough time for them to dispose of him, along with any evidence, and then for them to come up with an explanation. But if this were true, why would they come up with such a strange, almost paranormal story? There was also no clear motive for them to harm him. No evidence of foul play was ever discovered, but none of the other surveyors were ever seriously considered a suspect, and therefore were never interrogated or investigated further. Some believe they need to be questioned again. Another theory suggests that Christopher had just walked away and started a new life somewhere. But why would anyone do this in such a bizarre manner? leaving behind a single boot and a small pile of pocket change. Surely, the best way to run away would have been to not turn up to work at all, calling in sick perhaps. 
However, this theory was still backed by his bosses, who said that Christopher had been acting strangely in the days leading to his disappearance. His mother strongly denied that there was anything wrong with her son. In an interview with the Ledger Inquirer, she said this, Chris lived with me and I saw him every day. There was neither strange behavior on his part, nor any distress. Christopher's friends and family all described him as well-adjusted and happy. His colleagues added that he was a respectable, hard-working young man, so his disappearance is very out of character. Another theory put forward was the possibility that he might have been attacked by a wild animal, but this idea was quickly dismissed since there would clearly have been evidence to support such an attack. Also, how could this possibly happen so quickly, and within eyesight of his colleagues, without any of them knowing? Paranormal theories range from the suggestion that some mysterious and very powerful force had picked him up and taken him away, with his belongings being dropped and caught on the fences as he was carried off. Another was that he had fallen into a vortex, but then how did his belongings end up where they did? With every possible theory, from the bizarre to the logical, there is immediately a detail that contradicts it. And that's one of the saddest things about the disappearance of Chris Tompkins. There is absolutely no sense of closure, and that will continue to haunt all those that knew him. Eileen Moor is an uninhabited island off the northwest coast of Scotland. On its highest point stands the 75-foot-tall Flannan Isles Lighthouse, built in the 1890s and first operated on December the 7th, 1899. One year later, almost to the day, three lighthouse keepers working on rotation there completely vanished without a trace. Lush grass grows on the island, and in days gone by, shepherds would often take sheep there to graze in the warmer months but the shepherds never felt comfortable enough to stay overnight. Locals from the surrounding Hebrides were quite superstitious of the island of Eileen Moor and the other Flannan Isles. For hundreds of years, it was believed that supernatural forces were at work there. Others believed, and some still do, that the island is haunted by sea spirits. The official report on the three missing lighthouse keepers concluded that they must have been swept out to sea by a violent storm, but too many questions loom over that verdict to satisfy even the slightly inquisitive mind. On the night of December 15th, 1900, a ship passing by the Flannan Isles realized that the newly built lighthouse was not operational. Upon landing at Leith, they reported the lighthouse to port authorities but it seems the Northern Lighthouse Board never got the message. A ship was due to set sail for Eileen Moor on the 20th of December to drop off supplies for the lighthouse keepers, but due to rough seas, the trip had to be delayed until six days later. Captain James Harvey and his crew were tasked with delivering the supplies that day. Also on board was a relief keeper, Joseph Moore, who was said to be quite anxious at the time pacing around and refusing breakfast. The fact that there were three lighthouse keepers on the island and the beacon had not shone for over 10 days was disturbing him. The duty of a keeper was a solemn one and for a torch to go and lit was virtually unheard of, especially for so long. When the ship arrived at Eileen Moor, a flag was raised to signal their arrival. After a while of waiting, nothing happened. They tried sounding the horn several times, then tried letting off a flare, but all they were greeted with was silence. The relief keeper, Joseph Moore, was sent ashore to find out what happened to the light and the three keepers, James Decat, Thomas Marshall, and Donald MacArthur. As he walked up the hill to the lighthouse, Joseph apparently felt a sense of dread wash over him. He approached the building, cautiously pushed open the unlocked door, and slowly entered. Silence hung in the air. Making his way through the lighthouse, he found cold ashes in the fireplace and a half-eaten meal at the table. He also noted the clock had stopped, 
and an overturned chair laid on its back, which indicated to him that someone might have got up in a hurry. He moved through the lighthouse, the whole time feeling as if he were being watched. He approached the bedrooms with dread, wondering what waited inside. But all he found was empty, unmade beds. The lantern room above was all in order. Lenses were clean, lamp was trimmed, all ready to go. Another strange thing that Joseph noticed was that two of the keeper's waterproof oilskin coats were missing from the lighthouse, but one remained. This part of the world is very wet, windy, and cold much of the time, let alone in the dead of winter. Even on dry days, the ocean spray and wind can rapidly amplify heat loss. Why would one of the keepers leave the lighthouse without this essential piece of clothing? Joseph went back to the ship to report his findings, whereby Captain Harvey ordered a full search of the island. All they managed to find was damage from recent rough weather, causing them to speculate perhaps a freak storm had suddenly come crashing in and swept them all away. The damage after all was quite severe, but no such storms were noticed from the nearby inhabited island of Lewis and Harris in the previous days. Furthermore, the three men were experienced keepers with unblemished track records. They had dealt with storms and rough weather for years, not to mention it was strict protocol for one keeper to remain in the lighthouse at all times. How could they all have gone missing at once? Still, if a freak storm were the answer for the three lighthouse keepers' disappearance, the bodies of the three unfortunate souls would soon wash up on the shores of Lewis and Harris, and if not, one of the other surrounding Hebridean islands. Speculation soon flared up. The supernatural forces that local folk spoke of were blamed by some. Others say a sea monster was responsible for the devastation and vanishing lighthouse keepers. Others still claimed madness and murder. Interestingly to the scientific mind, madness and murder isn't entirely out of the question. The old lighthouse lamps they used to use actually floated in a bath of mercury to minimize friction in the spinning mechanism. They didn't know it back then, but mercury is highly toxic. The top three side effects of mercury poisoning are anxiety, depression, and irritability. Depression and irritability are self-explanatory, but anxiety is an interesting one. For some people, it causes them to retreat into themselves. For others, it causes them to become very aggressive. Three men stuck on a desolate island, with little to do and nowhere to go, could have been an incident waiting to happen. It's worth noting that if tensions between the men had reached boiling point, wouldn't there be more signs of a struggle if violence had occurred in the lighthouse? Also, is it possible that two of the men could have been calling for urgent help from the third man who had remained inside? Hearing their panic, he got up abruptly, tipping his chair on its back, leaving his meal on the table, and leaving his coat behind, since there wasn't a moment to spare. The official report at the time ruled that the keepers had all been tragically killed in a freak storm. But truth be told, the bodies were never found, and the circumstances surrounding their disappearance remain shrouded in mystery. All we're left with are questions and theories. What do you think happened on the island of Eileen Moore?